Need fast, cheap, reliable MUD coins? Go to MMOXP.com for the cheapest coins on the market. And use discount code MONEYSHOT for an additional 5% off your next order. Link in the description below. <laughs> Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff not the Mad Cheese as always. Got a money play scheme for you today. Three plays, two passing, one running. Uh, where ultimately I'm going to show it to you in gameplay. Sometimes I do it in practice mode. Sometimes I do it in gameplay uh, to satisfy the people that uh, question it. Although, realistically, I probably don't get that many questions about it anymore. But still, for the people out there that say show it in gameplay to prove that it works, that's what today's video is going to be. It's going to be all gameplay. Before I get into the video, though, if you guys could do me a favor, hit the like button, like, shares, comments, all that stuff stuff really helps out my channel so if you want to show support you can show support that way other than that if you like what you see make sure to stick around by hitting the subscribe button and let's go and let's get right into the video now the three plays that i'm going to focus on here are all on this page one of which should look familiar in the middle high low that's something that i put out a while ago and i'm going to touch on that play first because ultimately that's the play that's the most patched out of this formation it's something that in the past you used to be able to motion across one of these receivers, either the slot receiver or the tight end, and it would flip the DBs on the defense kind of involuntarily. doesn't really do that anymore. Now, when you make that motion, it doesn't happen. So that was ultimately what, what made this play still kind of glitchy against cover three. Uh, so now you don't really get that effect. So that's something that doesn't really work. But it still has some effectiveness in other ways. Like if you do do it against the cover three, um, you can still have success with the with the the, the streaking tight end up the slot now the b route will typically pull apart the cover three and you'll have a throw to be made to the a route um, but you can see i mean if the user's on it's a little bit tighter of a throw though it worked out there and then when it comes to cover two it's still a devastating cover two play now my opponent here tries to switch over to a cover two zone and i, I basically quick hike it before i get the safety over but it would work out the same either way so it's a really still a good cover two play so it's still part of the scheme uh, but ultimately the the play that really makes all the difference now is the dominant to play is the strong curl the strong curl is really going to be the play that i use for just about every defense it's super glitchy uh, whether it's man or zone i'll go over how it beats zone first if you want to mirror the first play, you can do that. You can motion across the tight end, put him on a streak, and it'll have success against cover two once again. This is pretty much the setup. Streaking the tight end, putting the B route on a smart route is going to be an important part of this play. But you can see right here, I mean, the, the, the cover two still follows. That's a cover two zone, but you can see how that cornerback follows him out. Uh, and that's not, not the best setup anyway. The best setup is going to be the motion in the running back. Now, a lot of times if it's man coverage or zone coverage, the, the running back's taking up the best corner, which is going to be great. Uh, and ultimately we're still going to do the exact same thing we're going to put the y route on a smart route we're going to streak the the x route i typically drag the a route because if it's a cover two zone that's going to be important for having the tight end dragging in this scenario and you're going to see how wide open this y route gets against zone coverages now this is a cover two you can see look how far apart the separation is between him and the nearest defender he's probably gonna have about 10 yards of separation by the time i throw this ball i try to throw it up to get past and i almost do but the tight the, the safety makes a good play and uh, keeps me from scoring a touchdown. But that was actually cover three. I'm sorry. I thought that was a cover two. But ultimately, you can see against cover three and cover two, as I'll show throughout this video, it's going to have the same success against zones. This is going to be wide open. Here's another one. This is kind of a weird zone. It's like a cover three cloud or something like that. You can see there's nobody even on the ball to start. So, you know, some formations might, you know, weird formations might do a little bit better. As you can see right here, the cover three cloud, a little bit different. But ultimately, traditional coverage is like cover two and cover three. It's going to really be wide open and super glitchy with how far uh, you have space when he once he breaks the line so here i mean i'm always running to the open side of the field too as well as you can see that's going to be one of the most important things uh but like i said nobody's gonna be using out here look how far out this is and he would have been gone other i mean this is not a fast enough receiver andre johnson but if i had my speed receiver running that route he'd definitely been gone you can see like i said cover two it's destroying that but you can see it doesn't really matter. Cover two, cover three, probably would work the same against cover four. I hadn't really, I don't have any cover four footage in this particular game. But you can see pretty much any zone coverage, it's really getting outside of it by a ridiculous margin, and it's super easy. It's a super easy read. I mean, nobody's going to be usering out that far either. That's part of the play. Now it also has a lot of one play touchdown ability, especially when it comes to cover three. Because of the spread of this formation, especially, I mean, all you really have to do is streak everybody. Once again, you still want to put the B route on a smart route pretty much every time. But the X route and the A route are going to be explosive plays against cover three because they're going right up the cover three seams. So ultimately, on this particular play, I mean, you can see the cornerback doesn't know where to go. If I would have held the ball, he would have went to the B route. But I went to the A route because I thought that I could score with that. Ultimately, the A route's your tight end, so that's really the only deterrent from that being a scoring play is the tight end. And if you want to run it from the 
the far hash mark like I'm running it here, typically you're going to have a much better result. Uh, if you run it from the center of the field, the cornerback won't react as quickly. But now that I'm running to the open side of the field, you're going to watch that cornerback's not going to take any time to choose. He's just going to he's just going to go straight to the side of the field. And then you can see right here, I just get a bad throw. But that easily would have scored against cover three because that's what that is. That's a cover three, one play touchdown all the way. I just didn't complete on that particular play. Against man, there's a lot of different things you can do. I mean, this setup... You only really need to use three receivers for the setup, the streak, the, the smart route, and the drag, which is the A route. So I really have two receivers that I can do whatever I want with. The drag, though, is obviously a man beater. A lot of times users won't follow that, especially if they're in, in something where it's like an empty you know, man blitz or something like that. A lot of times they might not be looking at that. It's definitely a very safe check down, but it's not the only thing you can do. It's something that I use. Let's, like I said, it's already part of the setup. I'm still typically looking at the Y route to see if he gets an outside release or separation. But if he doesn't get, like I said, the A route's always there for a really good check down. Typically, that if you have a good tight end, he'll beat whatever linebackers in coverage. Uh, but you can also get a little more aggressive if you put him on a slant. Typically, that's a very safe option too. He's going to get open. I also, like to give myself a check down. I'd like to put the Y route on a zig. That's something that one of those two routes should get open. So you basically make it a to read play on this particular player also drag the rb route although he doesn't beat his his job the uh, the tight end once again does tight ends if you have a good tight end like i have they're always going to beat that then i also like to do uh one more adjustment like if it's like on this particular play it's a third and ten i have two receivers that aren't getting used the rb route and the b route are not getting used at all just a simple in route because a lot of times if, if your user is following that tight end they're going to leave the center of the field following that tight end they're going to leave the b route open so on some plays i'll just i'll basically set the user up by by giving giving that different timing from the B route and the A route. So the B route really develops late, so he basically just gets an inside release. He's going to get that just about every time. And then, as always, you guys know, I, I'm a big believer in zigs. If you watch any of my gameplays, I'm, I always use this setup where I basically just zig the slot receivers on both sides of the field. It's very uh, easy, you know, play to pick up, you know, but maybe eight to ten yards every time and then if you get a, somebody who hits you with an all-out man blitz safeties cannot cover that smart route so on a play like this where it's obvious that the safety is going to be on the outside receiver he's just going to get roasted and then you just have a really easy uh big play as you can see i mean safeties just they just can't cover that so anybody that's going to man blitz this is going to get beat instantly now, the last play is the quarterback draw. Now, this is not as simple as it looks. I used to just use this when the, when the center of the field was was empty, typically against man coverages. But now I find that if you take it to the outside, it's just way more running space. And you can see how fast the design quarterback's runs are. That was a cover for a drop. Uh, but you can run up the middle. I mean, you can really run it wherever you want. But I find, especially when they're, when they're blitzing, when they're man blitzing, which a lot of people do, and they think that they get an advantage against this defense because there's no blocking tight end, you just take it to the left, and you really have a lot of, a lot of space. Here's an all out man blitz you can see stack in the box that's going to be to his detriment because a lot of these guys they get caught up on blocks they're not going to be able to catch you and then you can see i mean this is just super easy so that right there he was really trying to send the house but you can do it up the middle too i mean if, they, if they're spread like this they're asking for it you can see you can have a lot of success obviously you're not as fast when you're running uh in this direction because you're running the blockers but you know you can see they can have success there so that's it that's the vid if you guys want to see more videos like this do me a favor hit the like button and let me know in the comment section other than that thanks for watching man my shit out need more help or just want to show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more link in the description below